Hey, thank you so much for watching. I'm Pippi Peterson. You can connect with me on Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as my website at pippitings.com where you can get your Righty Row t-shirt. So today I'm going to be installing an electric awning on my RV. You see these huge windows on this side of my RV. When the sun hits them, it heats up my RV so fast. So I'm kind of desperate to get a little bit of shade. And uh, there's a few things that you need to consider if you want to be buying an awning. First of all, there's brand, there's a company. So there's, for the longest time, there's been like just two companies, but now there's like two and a half or three, right? So you kind of have just a few choices. There's some others that will do more customized awnings, but really if you're just your average person, there's two or three choices. And those are Carefree from Colorado and Dometic. I went with Carefree because one, Carefree, they only specialize in awnings. They only, only, only do awnings. Whereas Dometic, they've got like their hands in like every single type of RV thing available. And because of that, they actually have like a lot of recalls on different products. I'm not saying they're a bad company. I absolutely have a couple Dometic things. My fridge is Dometic, um, which they've had recalls on of those fridges. Uh, but anyway, they don't have like a focus in the business and Carefree does. And so that's a little more valuable to me when I'm buying, you know, a pretty expensive product and I want them to be like specializing in it. The other thing that I really liked about Carefree is that they're almost 100% based, manufactured, designed in the US, like right in Colorado. So I think that's pretty, pretty cool. All right, so once you've picked out the company you're gonna do, then you wanna decide whether you want an electric one or a manual one. And both have their pros and cons. It's kind of just your preference. And then after that, then you wanna decide what type of fabric you wanna get. So there's um, basically two types. There's vinyl and then there's acrylic. And then uh, what I also liked about Carefree is they've got even like some extra features amongst those two. Vinyl is going to tend to be the more popular feature, or just more commonly bought. Vinyl is a little bit cheaper than acrylic. It doesn't mean acrylic is better or vinyl is better. They're both quality choices. So vinyl will be the more popular one, slightly uh, cheaper. Uh, vinyl is a textile and then it has a scrim built into it underneath to give it extra strength. And then acrylic is a woven material. And because the acrylic is woven, it actually is slightly less common to mildew because it's breathable. However, so here's one of the cool features about Carefree. So they've got the regular vinyl and then they've got like this premium vinyl, which I ended up getting. And that premium vinyl, it has some material on it or in it where it also makes the vinyl choice more breathable. And uh, therefore, you know, a little less prone to uh, mold and mildew buildup. Also that extra super duty or the premium vinyl that I went with with Carefree, they have, uh, it's a little bit thicker, it's like a heavier grade and they double hem and then they double fold all the hems and stuff so it's like uber strong and then they sew it together with uh, like this kind of material that comes from the brand Gore-Tex, you know that like super sturdy like plasticky stuff. So it's made with that same thing. So it's like really extra super duty. And with that premium option, they give you like a 10 year warranty, whereas the other ones are like one year. So for like the tiny extra bit of money, it's really a good choice, I thought, because you know it's nice to have nine extra years of warranty on your awning. So anyway, those are the couple different choices between uh, vinyl and acrylic. Oh, also acrylic, because it's like a woven material, it comes usually in a lot more color selections than vinyl. Vinyl might have just a few, whereas acrylic might have like 20. So in the end, I ultimately went with the Carefree Traveler awning, the electric one, which I'm so excited about. And I went with a couple additional features. By the way, actually, there's one other cool thing that I liked about Carefree that's exclusive to, exclusive to them is when you put your awning out, sometimes you wanna tilt it certain ways so that rain runs off, or maybe there's always like a slight wind from one direction and you just wanna kind of uh, uh, try to get it out of the way of that. So they have this feature where you can automatically, you know, or you manually adjust it, but when you roll it back in, the awning's like super smart that it actually, you know, levels it on its own and brings it back in. And when you 
roll it to go back out again, it'll remember that and go back to that position. So that's kind of cool. So anyway, the other additional features that I got, which I'm the biggest one that I'm like so excited about, is this one has a feature where it's, it's called direct response and it will sense the wind and if it gets too windy, it'll roll itself in. So I'm so excited about that. And then the other feature I went with was LED lights. So the lights are actually in the awning. I don't have to take them down, you know, or put them up. They're like part of the roll. So those are the features that I got and I can't wait. So let's get this installed. But to begin, your RV is going to definitely need an awning track. And that is what the top of the awning material will slide into. You possibly already have an awning track installed. If you do, lucky you. And if you don't, like me on this side of my RV, I do not. I can, I'm either going to have to remove the edging piece that is there and install the awning track where that edging piece was. Or if I'm lucky enough, I'm gonna have to go up and test, the frame of my RV is wide enough that I can install the awning track below that edging piece. But the most important thing, that awning piece, that awning track has to have frame behind it. You have to screw every screw into framing behind it. You can't just put it in the wall. Make sure that where you actually decide to like position the awning, that it's not going to interfere with lights or windows. And if it's going to be going over a door, it's got to be at least seven inches above the door so that the door can actually open. Since I installed the track on my own, I used duct tape to help me hold the long track up while I was mounting it. Be sure to use plenty of caulking behind the track when mounting to fill the holes that you'll be drilling. I was lucky to have Jeff Johnston, who is the host and associate producer for the TV show called Rollin' On TV, help me out a bit as they were on scene to film a segment for their TV show. I recommend checking out Rollin' On TV, as well as the segment where they featured me on their show installing my awning. All right, so now that I got my track finally installed, I'm ready to start assembling the arms and the roller the roller assembly so that it can be lifted on and slid into the track. So when you get your arms, one's gonna be motorized and one is not. So it'll have a sticker, so don't just tear off the plastic when you get it. This one says motor and then that one says idler. And you'll know the, where the arms go, like I can't put the motor one over there because the way they build it is for the motorized arm to be at the front of the RV. However, I'm doing it on a non-traditional side, so it's backwards. So that because of that, my motorized arm is gonna be on the back. So then it comes with the, the motor cable already in, and it's just kind of, uh, for shipping, they you know put it through this track. And you can decide if you wanna run the motor cable into the wall of the RV at the bottom of the arm or at the top. I wanna to run mine at the top. So I'm just going to pull this out of the track. So once you pull the cord out far enough, uh, when you're gonna actually mount it, so it'll actually, the cord will go into the wall like this. But to actually mount the arm, you need to get the cord a little bit out of the way because you're not ready to drill the hole yet in the side of the wall. So, if you're mounting from the cord at the bottom, you don't have to do this, but because I want to do it at the top, I have to take off these zip ties that are keeping the arm closed, and it's really important that you take precaution and hold it because the thing's pressurized and it'll shoot out. So I'm going to remove these zip ties and make sure that the pressure doesn't open the arm. And that way, then I can get this cable out the top for temporary purposes of mounting the, the arm. So the next step is to get the arm attached to the roller assembly. So you can see that um, you have to line it up a little bit. And before you do this, you wanna make sure that the fabric is going you know, over and up toward the mounting uh, track, not under beneath. Once you get the roller assembly aligned and inserted into the mounting bracket, then it's got two attached holes and of course you just use the screws that are provided and attach them. And I'm going to push my arm into it to make sure I'm I'm fully, fully in there. 
All right. And then you're gonna to wanna to do it on, on each side, so the other side as well. The arms are attached to the roller assembly and we're ready to put it up. And uh, this is the part, you can see there's this cord that's gonna get slid through the awning track. And to help it go through that track a little bit better, you can use some silicone spray. And uh, it's always easier to spray the rag and then apply, apply it on here. To protect the fabric as you're beginning to slide it in, as well as help feed the awning through the track, you can flare the opening a little bit. Okay, so go ahead and walk forward, Larry, just little steps at a time. Now that the awning is slid through the track and these are balancing on the ladders, we're ready to make the first connection points into the wall of the RV. And there's these brackets that are at the top of the arm and they are going to, they give you a little bit of flexibility on where you can put them so that you can definitely drill it into the frame of the RV. You cannot put it, uh, you know, just in the wall. So anyway, that is the next step and probably the most like detailed and tedious and you're gonna need, you know, some people to help you out and hold it uh, so that, cause the arm has to actually be opened a little bit. So that's a little risky cause you know, the arm could pop open. So anyway, probably the, the hardest step right here, but home free once that's done. To help me, you know, not let this thing fly out. I'm actually going to open it up for about what I need. I'm definitely gonna need to get a drill back here. And then I'm going to wrap some, you know, a big loop of tape around it. That way it can't spring open farther than I want. All right, it's all ready to go. Got my drill space and ready to mount it. I've got the two upper mounting brackets installed, so it's kind of, you know, pretty sturdy in there. And before I do any more attachments, I just want to test the motor cable and fingers crossed that when I uh, connect it to some power that it's going to roll in or out. And, uh, you know, you can't just plug this into a wall, right? So um, if you can use like an old, you know, uh, battery from your drill and then it's got positive and negative down there. So we can just connect those and fingers crossed that it moves. <gasps> it's working. <laughs> That's awesome. So if you if so that rolled in, if I wanted to test it and roll it out, I would just reverse the the wires. So when you install your awning, you're going to want to know uh, depending on the manual and the type of awning, it'll tell you which holes need to be mounted first and so for me it's it's uh, this one here and then this one and on these bottom holes is probably not likely of course you'd be really lucky if you did but it's probably not likely that you're going to be drilling into the frame of the RV you're gonna be drilling into the softer less durable wall so uh, Cure Free has provided two options if you're gonna screw into the frame they give you lag screws and if you're going to drill into the wall which i am then you're going to use uh, molly rivets and both of those require a pilot hole so let's get started on this so don't forget as you continue to put your rivets in that you're going to want to use some silicone in each hole and that'll just help protect it from any possible leaks All the arms have, they've got their full four rivets and the two mounts up here. And so I'm ready to drill my hole, which will take my cable into the interior of the RV. And then I can start hooking up all the electrical aspects along with the motor cable uh, or my LED lights. So those can also go inside too. Here it comes.
stay tuned for the second half of this installation in another video, which will include all the how to's of how to wire this all up. And if you found any sort of value, educational value or entertainment value in this video, please like it and share it. Give it a thumbs up, leave an awesome comment and subscribe to my channel for more upcoming videos. Thanks so much for watching.